I made a short film of 1985 two years ago. Uh, in a nutshell, it's based on my experience of interacting with a lot of um, people who were living with HIV and AIDS uh, in my first job after I graduated from college. And you know, it's only after all these years that I've started thinking about my experiences with them and the conversations I had. And there was just something that was like, like for me, it was like captivating me, like and making me, like probe into like what the stories meant and what the conversations were. And so I wanted to explore those stories. And I started exploring that in the story in the short film, and then I expanded that into a feature. It was so incredible after I read it that I ended up writing you this really yeah. long letter about like people that I knew that had died and my experiences in the 1980s. And he, you wrote back like, wow, that was a lot. <laughs> and, and but I, I was very really taken by it and also in love with the fact that they were going to do it in black and white and um, and it just it's it's a it's a really beautiful story but it's also it's a story that's also very current it's not just about what was going on when people were dying of AIDS in 1985 which is an important enough story as it is but people are living this dilemma now and people who are different and LGBTQ and non-binary, like they can't, there's a lot of people who can't come out to their families. So that struggle unfortunately remains the same today. And I loved how modern that was in the story. Well, uh, uh, it's an independent feature, so there wasn't really time or money for rehearsal <laughs> at all. Uh, so I, I mean, what, what the, what the film kind of required was a lot of trust. I think a lot, we were familiar with each other and with each other's work. Uh, so there was a lot of trust going into the process. Um, for the family, we kind of started first, and we did, we had Christmas Day, I think it was our, our third day of shooting. Yeah. Uh, and that felt like a, a really serendipitous thing that it happened early on, because we literally yeah. just got to spend the whole day in pajamas, sitting in our living room, and deciding what a Lester family Christmas was like. Uh, so you know, you have something like that in a script, it's kind of like an instant bonding thing. One of the biggest uh, takeaways for me was that it was a very immersive sort of look in terms of really taking you back in time. Um, and so when we made the feature, black and white was kind of like the next thing for us where we felt like we, we want to push it even more aesthetically into something where even though it's set in the 80s and you think of 80s as a very colorful neon sort of thing, we wanted to present it in a black and white setting because I feel like that gives us a more of a timeless quality. And also, I, f I also feel like we're telling the film in a very specific way where it, in some ways we're touching upon things that haven't really been talked about. Um, so it was like, you know, a combination of narratively trying to do something different and visually also trying to, you know, complement the story in that way. And, and, and I feel like black and white also forces us to, um, really look at the faces and the body language of the actors. You know, you're not focused, you're not like distracted by the stuff that's in the background, you know, like with 80s and stuff, especially it's like very colorful and stuff. And we, you know, we're all like nostalgic for that era and we are prone to like look at different things in a frame. And in this case, you are just looking at the characters and I feel like it's really important for us to just like narrow our focus to them. Yeah.